Hello there, wonderful people of the internet. In the previous video, we discussed time signatures, what they are and how to find them. Today, in part two of Back to Basics, we'll be discussing subdivisions. <laughs> Last week, we defined time signatures as the amount of equal beats we have in a bar. Today, We'll talk about the ways we divide each of those main beats into sub-beats, or in musical terms, subdivision. Remember the mosaic analogy? Last week, we established the time signature as our workspace. For example, let's assume our bar is a 4-4 bar. Each quarter note will be represented by one of these blocks. The next step is determining the amount and size of pieces that we'll use for each block. The more pieces we have, the more artistic possibilities open up. If, for example, we divide each block to four equal pieces, we are limited to 16 ways in which we can organize these within each block. But if we divide each block to eight equal pieces, our options total at 256, which is a lot. While technically you can divide every main beat into however many beats you desire, the main options are 2, 3, 4, 6, and 8. And more recently, modern musicians also incorporate more 5s and 7s as well. As we go along, I'll play a constant kick and snare groove and the hi-hat will play all the subdivisions. Besides the mathematical differences, try and focus your ears on identifying the different vibe you get from each subdivision. Okay, so starting with two, two is called eighth notes because we're dividing the quarter note into two parts. The eighth notes for me sound pretty steady and pretty basic, you would say, and they have like a rock feel. Next one would be three. If we divide a quarter note into three equal parts, that's called a triplet. To my ears, this sounds bluesy and shuffly and swingy. By the way, this can very easily be confused with a 6-8. Dividing a quarter note into four pieces gives us 16 notes. This is also steady, like the 8th notes, but a bit denser. I get a funky, more forward kind of vibe from this one. Okay, so dividing a note into 6 equal beats is called a sextuplet, or 16 note triplets. I'm getting a swingy, shuffly kind of vibe again, but this one is a bit denser and a bit quicker. The next subdivision will be dividing each quarter note into 8 equal pieces. This one will be called 30 second notes. These are very dense, very fast and have like a breakbeat kind of vibe. The next one is not as common as the other ones and is dividing each quarter note into 5 equal beats. This one is called a quintuplet. The feel I get from this one is kind of weird and it's uneven, you might even say sloppy. The last subdivision we'll discuss is dividing each quarter note into seven pieces. This one is called a septuplet. Like the five, it's kind of weird and uneven, though it's a bit denser and honestly, septuplets are pretty rare. If you know songs that use them, please let me know. And if you want to listen to a song that uses them, I'll put a link down below. Okay, now that we heard all these examples, we can move on. I like grouping these subdivisions in more general groups. So the binary side, which is 2, 4, and 8. The ternary side, which is 3 and 6. And of course the last group, which I'm gonna call the WTF group, that has quintuplets and septuplets and all the weirdos. The two main groups 
the binary and the ternary, are made up of subdivisions that are multiplications of the same number. I'll play a simple groove using a combination of subdivisions from the binary group. Listen to how smoothly they interact with one another. Same goes for the ternary group. Each group has an underlining tone or feel that becomes denser with each multiplication. So the tone stays the same, but the density changes. The what the fuck group is just their, their own, forget about it. The conclusion of all of this is the fact that determining in which group we are, binary, ternary, or the what the fuck group, is more important than actually identifying the specific subdivision. Oh, now I see, now I get it. In the previous video, we've discussed that different genres have a different approach when referring to the same time signature. These differences in approach also come into play when discussing subdivisions. For example, music traditions from places like Morocco or Brazil, to name a few, have some of the coolest musical features out there. We refer to this as swing, but not the 1940s, not that kind of, you know, real book swing. No, not that, a different kind of swing. Take a pandero, for example, playing a samba groove. In theory, this rhythmic pattern is a 16 note pattern with an accent on the first and the last note of every main beat. But in practice, it's way cooler than this. My friend will show you with a uh, real pandero. Hey, my name is Thomas. I'm a Norwegian percussionist and I'm going to show the difference between the straight feel and the feel with the swing. To show that, I'm just going to play the basic samba pattern on the pandero. So first, the straight pattern. One, two, three, four. And then with the swing, I'm gonna exaggerate it a little bit just so you really like hear the feel of it. So one, two, three, four. Did you notice the difference? One of them is kind of straight and mechanic while the other one is fluid and kind of flexible. It has this elasticity going on. I've seen some musicians and composers try to analyze these non-Western rhythms using Western notation. They come up with some crazy looking rhythms. I don't really think you can do that. You can't take a non-Western concept and analyzing it using Western tools. I think you lose the whole essence of these grooves, but that's a topic for a whole different video. Next week, we'll go over the manipulation process of this subdivision. And practically speaking, we'll discuss how to create polyrhythms. Lastly, before I finish, I just want to thank Tomas again. Make sure you follow him everywhere. He is incredible. Thanks for watching.